Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and I have another series review for you today. So I recently devoured the Queen's Cove series by Stephanie Archer. So I saw this in like my Kindle recommends thing. I saw The Wrong Mr. Right, which is book two. Promptly picked it up, read it, and then um, I couldn't stop. So then I read books one, three, and four. And I loved it. It was so good. Like, oh my gosh, yes. So I think this series is complete. Um, but if it's not, I will be reading the next book because I absolutely loved it. It's a four book series. It takes a place in, in a small town called Queens Cove, which is in, I want to say British Columbia, Canada, which is like famous for cold water surfing, which funsies, I guess that means surfing in a wetsuit, but it's super cute. It has fun, quirky, small town vibes, a very rampant gossip mill. Like it's so much fun. So the first book is called That Kind of Guy, um, and it is following Emmett and Avery. So Avery is a transplant. She moved to Queens Cove five years ago. She works in this restaurant called The Arbutus, and she wants to eventually buy the restaurant from the owner. And Emmett owns a construction company with his brother, but he decides that he is going to run for mayor because the current mayor isn't really doing anything. Their power grid goes out constantly, all kinds of things. Their current mayor isn't really doing anything. But he finds out that he needs to have, like, a girlfriend in order to be, like, seen as reliable to the town. And Avery can't get a business loan. So Emmett decides that he is going to approach her with an offer she cannot refuse. That is, he will co-sign her loan for her so she can buy this restaurant if she pretends to be his fake girlfriend um, in order to kind of get town support. And she kind of reluctantly agrees. She thinks that Emmett is just, like, a pretty boy, um, just like her dad was. So they start spending time together and they start getting in deeper and deeper. He's like, let's pretend that we're engaged. And then it's like, let's just get married. And there is a guy that's trying to buy the restaurant out from under her. And of course, Emmett's mayoral race is going on and there's like so much stuff going on. But throughout this, you know, she always is just kind of like, okay. And he's like, we're gonna put on a new deck for the building and we're gonna change your windows and we're gonna do all this. So she's getting like the promise of this labor and he is getting the support of the town. And it's so fun. There's like this whole thing where he's terrified of turtles and there's like pictures of them holding turtles, like, which is like so funny to read about, like actually laugh out loud funny. Absolutely love it. This one was really good. I really liked it. I liked their relationship building. I enjoyed how like he fell first and she was like, no, 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 no. But it ended up being really good. And then when there is like a big climactic thing that could ruin their relationship, they are both still all in. And I just absolutely loved it. The next book was my favorite book in the series, and it is The Wrong Mr. Right. And in this one, we are following Hannah and Wyatt. Hannah owns a, well, she's running a bookstore. Her father owns it. Her mom had started it, but her mom passed away when she was a teenager. Wyatt is trying to go pro surfing. He loves to surf, and he kind of choked um, last year at this big surf competition, and he's been invited back. So Hannah comes to him and she's like, hey, I want you to teach me how to be a hot girl. And he's like, mm, no. And she's like, I saw this video of you dressed like a merman on like a Swedish pop star thing. Anyway, he ends up agreeing to help her become a hot girl. So really what Hannah is lacking is an attraction. It is confidence. So Wyatt does these things that like kind of put her out of her comfort zone, has her asking people out, has her like going out on dates to try to get used to it and is teaching her how to surf. And throughout all of this, we see like a friendship growing between the two of them, but then her dad leaves for the summer and he hasn't wanted her to like fix up the bookstore any since her mom passed away, but Wyatt decides to help and they completely revamp the bookstore and actually make it a viable place of business. And it's so good to see him helping her like unselfishly in this. Like he doesn't want anything in return. He falls first, well kind of, because she has kind of always had a crush on him, but she doesn't think they could ever work. He's trying to go pro. She's trying to build this shop. There's just like so much stuff going on, but you really see a lot of character growth in both of them. You see that Wyatt um, finds out that like even if he's a pro surfer, he can have a life outside of surfing. You see Hannah seeing that she is like 
worth it, but also growing so much confidence and building this business like from scratch. She also builds Wyatt a social media presence from scratch. It's so, so good. Like I was laughing. I was crying. I was 100% here for it. Like it was amazing. If you only read one book in this series, I say read this one because I thought it was the best one, but they're all good. I love this one. Hannah and Wyatt are just like perfection. Absolutely loved it. The third book is I think it's called Dream On Holden Roads. Let me check. I have it written down. In Your Dreams Holden Roads. And in this one, we are following Holden and Sophie. Um, this is kind of an enemies to lovers romance. Holden is like the grumpy brother, but that grumpiness hides like a heart of gold and a softie who just wants to be loved. And him and Sophie inherit this in together, her aunts in after her aunt passes away. Sophie has got like her whole life is kind of a mess right now. She was engaged to this guy, but he ran away with all of their money from a business loan, $200,000. So she doesn't have money. She doesn't have a company. Her whole life is falling apart. And she decides that she's going to stay and like remodel the inn. Of course, Holden is helping her. She's an interior designer, but she can apparently do some pretty practical things too, which like good on you, girl. But it's so fun to watch them rebuild this place and to watch them discover that like their past isn't exactly what they thought. Holden apparently always had a crush on Sophie and Sophie just thought he hated her, but he goes above and beyond. Like he is an absolute angel. Like he is going to show her that she belongs here and that she can do everything that she hoped and wanted and that he's the perfect guy for her. And like, oh my gosh, it is just like, the things that Holden does like he is an absolute angel but she was trying to the whole thing was um she was going to help him find a wife in six months and he was going to pay two hundred thousand dollars so you have that bet going on but I love so it's a matchmaker romance but what I love about matchmaker romance is that it's always the person that is matchmaking and the person who wants like the significant other they are always perfect for one another and like this one they are perfect for one another like it's so so good four stars loved it then the last book is called forever finn roads and in this one we have finn who has been traveling around being like a wildfire firefighter and olivia who is working on her phd and also running her dad's bar her stepdad's bar because her dad left. Finn sees her dad in this other bar in this other town and he realizes that he doesn't want to have missed out on all this stuff. He doesn't want to give up on Olivia. So he goes home and he's like moving back home. So Olivia has been trying to complete her PhD and in doing this she's trying to find this particular flower that they think is extinct in this area but she swears that she saw it with Finn when they were children. So she ended up getting search and rescue called on her a couple times and they said that she's misusing the funds so she has to have a buddy when she goes out hiking well that buddy ends up being finn um it's much to her sadness and utter despair but her and finn also end up being neighbors because her dad rents him a room at the bar next to at like above the bar next door to her so they're spending all this time together and they kind of see why they used to be so close they were like best friends come to find out they were both in love with one another so there's like a mutual pining situation but he broke her heart because they had one night together and then he basically was like yeah whatever i'm leaving and then he left um and they've avoided each other ever since but on this quest to find this flower and on this quest to rekindle their friendship she's got kind of a how to lose a guy in 10 days type 10 dates type of thing where she just plans these horrible dates but finn is like having a ball anyway and he's one of those people that can just make the best out of any situation like their relationship is so so good like i love watching them rebuild that friendship and he realizes and she knows that she doesn't trust him anymore because he broke that trust so trying to watch him build the trust back watch her let him in all the while they are looking for this flower that can change the world like it's so good i love the treasure hunt vibes of the flower and everything like this was super good i really enjoyed this one as well honestly i really enjoyed them all but i gave this one four stars it was really good loved it love this series if you like are looking for a series read this one it's on kindle unlimited so if you pay for kindle unlimited you might as well read it and also these books are so 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 good i'm going to be reading way more stephanie archer because i was enamored like these books are so good so that's all that I have for you guys today. I do hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.